Hi, welcome to Building the Flying Fleet. This will serve as an introduction video to a series on the different phases involved with building the HM-293 Flying Fleet Experimental Aircraft. My name is Malcolm Morrison. I'm a retired software engineer. And while I do have a background in woodworking and general tinkering around, I don't have any formal training in aircraft construction. And I want to point that out because you don't need any formal training in aircraft construction to build your own home built airplane. There's a wealth of information available on Google, YouTube videos like this one, Facebook groups. Perhaps the most important is the Experimental Aircraft Association, EAA.org. If you're thinking of building an airplane, you really should be a member. There's a wealth of information through the EAA and they'll connect you with a whole community of people doing similar things. I have had the opportunity to build or rebuild a few other experimental home-built airplanes in the past, and the things I've learned on those projects, I'll be bringing along to this project to share also. My intent in making these videos is not to detail every little intricate part of the build, but more to give you a general idea of what's involved in building an airplane in general, or the fleet in particular, and then you get an idea of the scope of the project and decide if that's really the type of thing that you want to take on. You know, one of the things that might surprise you when it comes to building an airplane is you don't really need a big shop and you don't need a lot of tools. Take you on a little tour here of my shop, which is the garage. Wiener dog. Over here, we've got some sanders. These are just uh, cheapy Harbor Freight things. This sander right here is really handy. Uh, you're going to need a bench grinder for making the metal fittings. Of course, drills and a small drill press, drill press like this one is a must. Nothing real expensive. We'll be using the chop saw down here for cutting some of the bigger pieces. And then over on this side, we have another wiener dog. And this part of the garage is where the assembly will be taking place. I've been working on some wing ribs and there's my stack of material down here. The other material I have that has been cut to the right dimensions is up here on the wall. And also up on the wall is a two-piece workbench that I've put together. That's going to come down and it'll be a 4 by 8 workbench down here on the floor. And I'll be able to assemble all the pieces I need on that workbench and in this part of the shop. Another tool I'll be using is this little band saw. Not a necessity, but it makes things a little easier. It's not a great tool, but it gets the job done. I did try using this little miter saw here. Uh, this particular one, the teeth were a little too coarse, but a miter saw in general will work for you. Something else you're going to want is a, a decent vise, especially for making the metal pieces. We'll get into that later on. And then just a work surface area some tables, and, and finally just some space. I would say make sure you have good lighting. Well, I've put new lights out here in the shop and that's, that's a definite must. But other than that, you don't need a lot of space and you don't really need a lot of tools. You do need wiener dogs. Perhaps the biggest thing that stands in the way of building an airplane is the sheer scope of the project. There's no way to sugarcoat it. Building a home-built airplane is a very big project. It will likely, likely take you years to complete and cost you thousands of dollars. In fact, I hate to say it, but most people that start an airplane project, especially a scratch-built one like the Flea, never complete it. But so what? Building an airplane should be about the journey, not about the destination. If you really need an airplane, you can go fly today, go buy one. But if you're interested in building an airplane, enjoy the journey. There's an immense satisfaction that you can get from taking raw materials and turning them into parts, parts into assemblies, and assemblies into a finished airplane. There's going to be puzzles you have to solve along the way, new skills to learn, and you're going to hit roadblocks that are going to grind you to a halt. But if you persevere, in the end, you can have a project that you can be very proud of. And if not, if you don't make it through, again, so what? You will have had the, the fun of, of learning new skills, of building things, and you can always take what you've got and sell it to the next builder. Let him finish it. Or maybe he sells it to the next one. It's not at all uncommon 
for a home built project like this to go through several builders before it ever gets completed. Are you going to complete yours? You won't know until you try. Well, what about the airplane that I've chosen for this project? It's called a Flying Flea, or more specifically, an HM-293 Flying Flea. The flea was designed by Henry Meunier in the 1930s. It's an unusual tandem wing design where both wings provide lift, unlike a conventional design where the main wing lifts and the tail surface is actually pushed down for stability. There are no ailerons on the flea, so roll control is accomplished through rudder alone. And since you don't need to build ailerons, hinge them, add cables, pulleys, and so on, it saves weight and build time. Another unique feature of the flea is how you achieve pitch control. While conventional airplanes control pitch through an elevator on the tail surfaces, the flea accomplishes pitch control by pivoting the front wing. It's just as effective and you don't have to build and rig tail surfaces. Meunier's early model, the HM-14, was very popular in France and England and scores were built and flown with a variety of different engines. However, a design flaw resulted in a handful of fatal crashes. The fleas were temporarily grounded while French and English aviation authorities investigated the situation. It was quickly determined that the wings were too close together causing an interference in the airflow. The design was altered to remedy the situation, but the damage to the flea's reputation was done and the popularity never recovered. Still, Meunier would not be deterred and went on to design and produce dozens of different versions of the flea concept. Single and two-seat versions, all featuring the same tandem wing, no aileron layout of the original HM-14. The HM-293 that I'm building is a later version with a bigger cockpit than some of the early single-seaters. Its wood and fabric construction isn't too intimidating for the average enthusiast, and its really neat feature is that the wings fold for storage to less than 8 feet wide. My fleet will be powered with a Rotax 503 50 horse 2 cycle engine, and I'm going to build it with tricycle landing gear like the one shown here to improve the ground handling. So that is the HM-293 Flying Fleet. As the building progresses, I'll continue to make new videos that detail the different phases of construction. Each video will work, uh, will detail whatever part I'm working on or whatever assemblies I'm working on at the time. Right now, I'm not quite sure what that sequence is going to be, or frankly, even if I'll ever get it completed. But, like I said before, it's a journey. So, subscribe to my YouTube channel or just keep checking back to see if there's new videos. Now, let's go build an airplane.